Law of conservation of mass has very simple statement, but it is very important for chemistry. That is, the statement is, in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. That is, the total mass of reactants is always equal to the total mass of products. Next. Total mass of reactants in a chemical reaction is always equal to the total mass of products formed. That is, let's say A is an a reactant which is reacting with B to form product C and product D. Then, according to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of reactants should be equal to total mass of products. That is, mass of reactant A plus mass of reactant B is equal to mass of product C plus mass of product D. Mass of A, mass of B, this is the total mass of reactants, is equal to mass of C plus mass of D, that is total mass of products. So, total mass of reactants is equal to total mass of products. This is the law of conservation of mass. It is during a chemical reaction, matter is neither created or destroyed, or the total mass remains constant or conserved during a reaction. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Let's write this one to them. If we start with 1 gram magnesium and 2 gram oxygen, then according to the law of conservation of mass, the mass of product that is magnesium oxide which we will get up at the end of the product, uh, at the end of the reaction, would be the sum of these two, 2 and 1 that is 3. The initial mass of reactants was 1 gram plus 2 gram that is 3 gram. After the reaction the product which formed was of 3 gram. That is the total mass of reactants is equal to the total mass of product. This is the law of conservation of mass. Uh, let's try to understand, uh, let's try to solve a numerical problem. Uh, H2 reacts with O2 to form H2. Uh, before a uh, problem, before solving a problem, uh, let's understand the law with another example. H2 reacts with O2 to form water. Is this a balanced chemical equation? No, this is not balanced because there are two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side, two on product side, two oxygen atoms on the reactant side, but only one on product side. So this is not a balanced chemical equation. Uh, you know, so for balancing this, we will do, we will uh, multiply this by two. 1 mark by 2 is 1 by 1 by 2. Now, the question is uh, why do we always use the balanced chemical equation in chemistry? Why don't we use an unbalanced one? You know very well that we always use balanced chemical equation in chemistry. But why? Why is the question? Why do we use a balanced chemical equation? Answer is because we want to fit our chemical equation in law of conservation of mass according to which the total mass of reactant should be equal to the total mass of products. That's why we need to balance our chemical equation. If we don't balance, let's see uh, an unbalanced chemical equation. This one is not balanced. Here what we see that there are two oxygen atoms on the reactant side while only one on product side. That means the mass of reactant is equal to the mass, is greater than the mass of Product. And what is the difference? The difference is of one atom of oxygen. There is one extra atom of oxygen which increases the mass of the reactant. So mass of reactant is greater than mass of product in this equation. So this is not following the law of conservation of mass. 
So in order to fit our chemical equation in law of conservation of mass, we always balance this. So for balancing, we multiply this by a half, which is stoichiometric constant. So let's see this. Uh, this is a balanced equation. Now we will verify that whether this balanced chemical equation follow law of conservation of mass or not. What is mass of a, a dimolecular hydrogen? It is H2. Yeah, definitely. It is 2 gram. 2 gram is the molar mass of hydrogen. What is molar mass of oxygen? It is 32. But the stoichiometric constant is half, so it will be 16 here. 2 gram hydrogen is reacting with 16 gram oxygen to form water molecule and what is the molar mass of water molecule? Yes, it is 18 18 gram and you can see this clearly like 2 gram hydrogen reacting with 16 gram oxygen to form 18 gram water 16 plus 2 is 18 18 is the total mass of reactants and the mass of product form is also 18 that is the total mass of reactants is equal to the total mass of product form that is it follows the Kelly law of conservation of mass always and always the law uh, the total mass of reactants should be equal to the total mass of products form this is the law of conservation of mass now we will uh, move to the numerical problem uh, let's take an example of so we will discuss about sodium sodium reacts with bromine to form sodium bromide if 15 gram sodium reacts with bromine to form 20 gram sodium bromide what is the mass of bromine if so 15 gram of sodium metal reacts with bromine to form 20 gram of sodium bromide what is the mass of bromine used in the reaction once again uh, if 15 gram of sodium reacts with some amount of bromine to form 20 gram of sodium bromide, what is the mass of bromine used in this reaction? Let's say it is x gram. So 15 gram of sodium combines with x gram of sodium bromide, sorry, x gram of bromine to form 20 gram of sodium bromide. Then according to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of reactant should be equal to the total mass of product so 15 plus x should be equal to 20 or x is equal to simply 20 minus 15 which is 5 so 5 gram is the answer 15 gram of sodium will combine with 5 gram of bromine to form 20 gram sodium bromide this is because the total mass of reactant is always equal to total mass of product this law of conservation of mass is followed by almost every chemical equation why almost? Because there are some uh, nuclear reactions in which uh, there is loss of energy and energy is related to loss in mass that is E is equal to mc square which is a very famous formula of Einstein so uh, there the loss in energy is related with the loss in mass so apart from that almost every reaction follows the law of conservation of mass if there is a difference in mass it is so 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 small that we can neglect that one so if overall the mass is conserved during an ordinary chemical equation which is not a nuclear chemical equation of course as I told you so law of conservation of mass states that total mass of reactants is equal to the total mass of product form uh, let's take another example okay. again of magnesium and oxygen magnesium burns in the presence of oxygen that is it combines with oxygen to form magnesium oxide how much oxygen is required for conversion of 10 gram magnesium metal to produce 20 gram magnesium oxide what is the mass of oxygen required for conversion of 10 gram of magnesium which is a function of 20 gram of magnesium oxide 
So according to the law of conservation of mass, first of all let's assume that the mass was x, x gram of oxygen is required for combustion of 10 gram of magnesium which will result in the formation of 20 gram of magnesium oxide. So according to the law of conservation of mass, the total mass of reactant that is mass of magnesium plus mass of oxygen should be equal to the mass of magnesium oxide that is 10 plus x should be equal to 20 or x is should equal to 20 minus 10 this is 10 yeah 10 gram is the answer so 10 gram of magnesium will combine with 10 gram of oxygen 10 gram of oxygen will combine with 10 gram of magnesium to form 20 gram magnesium oxide this is because the total mass of reactants is equal to total mass of products so this is the law of conservation of mass according to which matter is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction or the mass of total mass of reactants is equal to the total mass of products I hope the law is clear to you and in our next video we will discuss about law of multiple proportions thank you